So first two con necessary conditions are practically the same, uh, but now the list of forbidden graphs contains uh, 26 of, of them. And a year later, Alon generalized this into matchings of any size k, uh, and he proved that, that, that we can find such a decomposition provided that necessary conditions in that case of this type are satisfied. So when we are talking about edge decompositions in dimensions, a uh, problem is completely solved, as we can see. But in the general case, we may formulate the following. So suppose we have a set of integers such that each integer represents a size of a matching in a graph and all those integers sum up to the size of a graph, then our question is whether we can find a decomposition of the graph into matchings with those sizes. So obviously that problem is very difficult because it contains in particular one factorization conjecture. Also uh, looking at some results on the complexity for uh, one factorizations, uh, we know that uh, even for cubic graphs, uh, it is a complete problem to uh, verify whether that graph uh, has such a decomposition. It is also difficult to find two disjoint one factors in a given graph. But we should remember that, that, that deciding whether a graph has a one factor is, is a polynomial. So, uh, let's consider the first easiest class for which we can get solution to the problem. This is obviously the cl a class containing uh, complete graphs. So, Baranyi was, okay, but yeah, Baranyi proved the following result uh, that when we take a complete graph and we take a uh, set of elements which are sizes, possible sizes of matchings, then we can always find uh, such a decomposition, I mean decomposition into matchings. Uh, his theorem is much more general because uh, that was done for complete uniform hypergraphs and also decompositions into almost regular de factors, but in particular, obviously, that holds for. In, in our case. Um, when talking about algorithms, it is not easy to get from his proof, polynomial time algorithm, because that proof is algebraic. But there is something done later, I mean, practically the same result. Uh, and authors of that paper uh, were using uh, well known recovering technique. And that technique will give us for efficient algorithm to get a decomposition. So what is a recurring technique? Let me briefly remind you. Uh, so first of all, we may say that the proper edge coloring of a graph is equitable if any two sizes of color classes differ by at most one. And once we have a given coloring, proper edge coloring of a graph, we can always transform it into equitable uh, proper edge coloring. How to do this? So suppose we have two color classes which differ by at least two. And let me look at the first color class, those red edges. So this is the bigger color class. And I'm taking the other one. So now looking at the graph induced by uh, edges of those two colors, so we have either cycles of even lengths or paths. But there must be at least two paths with both and edges which are red. Uh, so it is enough now to take that one, for instance, in the middle and to recolor edges. And now uh, the difference will be one less. So uh, in this, continuing this, obviously, we can get an equitable coloring. So for instance, that, as I said, that the key was used uh, to get the previous result. Um, as I said, this is polynomial time algorithm, but uh, in the, we cannot guarantee it is linear. And what we can guarantee is square 
of the number of edges in a graph. So looking for some linear method, uh, we can apply some direct technique. And for that, we can do the following. Let me show you on the example how to get such a decomposition. Uh, so suppose we are, we are constructing one factorization of K12 in usual way using uh, Valetsky's construction. So we have edges like this. And in the same time, I'm constructing a sequence of edges in the following way. I mean, putting edges in the same order as they appeared on the picture. And now taking the next one factors by consecutive rotations, we are continuing to construct our sequence. Um, so that sequence now consists of uh, segments which are lines here, and each segment represents uh, one factor. And very important property of this sequence is the following. When we look at two neighboring lines and uh, we want to find a repetition of the same vertex between those two lines, so you can see that a given vertex is either on the same position as in the previous line, the position one more or, or one less. That means that if we will taking, we'll be taking a uh, five consecutive edges, any five consecutive edges, that will be always a mesh. So now, if you want to find any decomposition into any sizes of meshings, so first we may start with uh, perfect meshings, those will be segments, entire segments, I mean consecutive lines, and then we can cut off other meshings in any uh, obviously, we can do the same, practically the same for odd order. So first of all, we need to modify, uh, I mean, to get near one factorization. So we need to delete edges which are incident to infinity. Uh, we are deleting uh, the vertex infinity. And now we need to modify sequence W. So that means uh, we are removing those edges. And that sequence has exactly the same property as before. So we are done for, for complete graphs. And as I said, we can do this in linear time on the number of edges. So the next interesting class is uh, relatively easy, uh, are a complete uh, balanced uh, tripartite graphs. And for them, also, Baranyai, a couple of years later, uh, proved analogous result. We can always find a required decomposition. And again, now we are looking for the algorithm. So first of all, we can use recoloring technique and to get a polynomial time algorithm, but complexity will be square of the number of edges. But we can try also to apply similar method to get linear time algorithm. So now construction is a little bit more uh, complicated because we need to consider separately four cases depending on parities of P and Q. So let me show you the easiest example uh, when P is even and Q is odd. So we are starting with the following meshing uh, in a graph on 15 vertices. So I'm taking edges only those which have lengths which are not divisible by brick. And now I need to attach five more vertices. Those will be five uh, vertices denoted by infinities and five more edges. And now it is enough to again rotate uh, 15 vertices in the middle to get to get a one factorization of a k or five. So we may look also as, uh, we, we, we may look at the picture as arrangement of vertices in the complete four by type, four by type graph. Uh, each column, column is a paratite set. 
So obviously we have no edge between uh, infinities and now you may see why I wanted to avoid edges with uh, lengths divisible by 3. So we will be rotating uh, that this is printed. verify what is the repetition distance for each vertex. Unfortunately, in this case, we are not able to avoid situation when the difference is minus 2. I mean, uh, matchings of size, uh, one less than the size of a perfect matching will make some trouble. So for them, we have to apply some recovery. Uh, perfect matchings can be cut off easily as consecutive segments and the rest obviously in the same way as before. Uh, for some other cases, I mean when uh, P and Q are of different parities, we have to do some other modifications, but practically practically uh, that, will be, that will be the same idea. So finally, we may formulate uh, the most general result, which is extension of what was done before. So uh, when we have any graph and a coloring such that color classes have sizes, either the maximum possible, the minimum possible, or maybe there is one matching one color with other uh, size of a color class, then in such a case, we can modify this coloring into a coloring with prescribed sizes of color classes. So what do we do? I mean, what's, what's the algorithm? It is, again, quite easy. So we start with the sequence that consists of sizes of uh, color classes in a non-increasing order. We need to modify the sequence into a sequence of length t. Uh, t is the number of elements in our set, uh, and we do that very easily. I mean, we, uh, we are attaching uh, elements equal to 1, and we are subtracting uh, other elements uh, going from the right. So uh, again, our resulting sequence is not increasing. And now we will be comparing this sequence with a sequence of sizes of required color classes and now it is enough to find the first from the first position from the left on which elements in both sequences differ uh, going from the right we have to find some other position and for those two positions I mean those two color classes we need to do recoloring and we will be continuing this until uh, get uh, exactly the same the same sequences. That's all. Thank you very much.